We can ask them. Yeah. I think that probably is worth pursuing, right? Is that they already have a clay model, and then they would already have the taxonomy somewhere accessible. So, uh, Trevor, we're just going to start the CDT meeting. Okay. I think what, what I'll probably do is, is mute myself in anticipation of the noise to come. But I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, listen, I'll listen in as long as I can. All right. Thank you. Sure. Good luck with the submission. Oh, thank you. We'll let you know yeah. when we submit. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Oh. Bye-bye. Uh, so, um, to start off in the room here, I have Virat, Ergin, Nina, Shaoling, and Kirk. And on the call, um, I have Ian, Jeff, and Yuling, Nansu, Philippe, and Trevor. Am I missing anybody? So, Nansu, do you know if uh, Huni is going to call in? Uh, no, I don't think so. She has a meeting, an an AOM meeting today. Okay. So then we can get started. Um, so on the agenda today, uh, we just talk briefly about updates on action items, um, and also mm -hmm. uh, our discussion points would be uh, what. Kind of, I think uh, Jeff and uh, Shaoling and I we had a meeting yesterday to talk about the uh, the fair supplement that um, uh, is the prefix comments that the prefix comments group is doing. So uh, maybe we can pro uh, have an update and see if that's what the whole what the whole group thinks about it, um, and also. Um, one of the points that came up is uh, with regard to handling of data aggregators. So there's a little bit of disparity in the way we are doing it right now, and so we would like to discuss that. And Philippe and Alejandra wanted to talk about the DAS um, and the way it was getting implemented uh, in DataMed, so uh, we can also talk about that. Uh, and if I was hoping that we could do a review of the repository list um, because uh, Jeff uh, and I, we thought it would be useful to do that. And I was hoping Huni would be on the call for this part since there's still um, curation and mapping transformation that's going on um, in Huni's team. Um, and then, if time permits, then we can do uh, get some updates from all team members. So um, I just heard from Jeff that we are more or less done with the complete reindexing with the updated NLP pipeline. And next week we'll have um, uh, some numbers that will come out of this, which talk about um, how long it took us. Uh, to actually com do the complete re-indexing. Um, Jeff, was there anything that I missed in that? No, no, no. Um, and with the data type ontology, Philippe and Alejandra, are there any updates? Um, yes, uh, we've been, yes, go ahead. No, sorry, if you want to go ahead, go ahead. Oh. oh, what what happened? Did we lose yeah. them? No, I I think I still see them. I, I'm here, I'm here. I just didn't want to interrupt. So we've uh, done the first pass uh, of the data type ontology 
Um, and after that, we've been busy with other stuff, including the Jamia paper. So, but we can share the first path in a GitHub uh, repository soon. So. So, uh, do you, what kind of, um, I guess, what kind of feedback are you looking for from the team? Um, well, we can tell you, so we defined the approach uh, considering, uh, I think we had a call about that, right? So you might remember. So we considered four axes to describe the data type. Um, and then, I mean, the, the feedback would be to see if the terms we have chosen for those elements are enough to tag uh, the data set. So one mm -hmm. first pass would be to try and, and annotate at the data repository level so that we, this first classification that you get on the data met at the beginning, uh, which at the moment each data repository is associated with a single data type. Right. Uh, we think it would be better to, to extend it so that, because in reality these repositories have more than one. That's correct. So if we, if we want to do it at the level of the data repository, then we also need to think about how we would be displaying uh, the repositories. Um, when we have the initial search box pop up with the results. So yes, if, uh, yes. if repository has two data, like example has two data types, then in both data types they will count the number of the repository. Is that okay? Okay, not so the result would be kind of duplicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? the data type, like, like data type, like one repository has contained like geo, and the other repository, uh, the other data type may also contain the number in the geo. To if that if geo contains two data types, like mm. yeah. But the number would be the same. So because we are doing it at the level of the uh, repository, yes, right? Yes. But if we had information about at the level of the data set, then we could potentially split the numbers. Yeah, yeah. If we can have in the data set level, then we can have the classes in, the, in that field. Then we can get the separate numbers. Okay. I'm just worried that the box will get very big. Yeah, in, in a way I feel that maybe the number should be given by repository rather than data by data type, type at that level because then in the data type you might count uh, multiple data sets potentially unless we are really granular but I'm not sure if that's the case for every repository that uh, because there might be data sets uh, if they are study based that they will include several data types for example. Can we display just with by repository name rather than the data type when we uh, show the initial results? We currently, we have repository name and also have right. the data type. Right, we have it classified with data type and under that the repository name, right? Oh. So we just remove the data type on the top and just have an, all the repositories. Uh, with like we don't have that data type practice at all, but in the repository we have showing with data type exists. What do you mean? Do you mean this? So um, no. So maybe we can. Okay. Right now. Right here you have it saying protein and then you have the number. So right. what what Alejandra presumably is saying is you just you don't you skip this protein part uh -huh. and you just put in the 
the number. So the number for each of the products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in this box? In this box. Okay, yeah, sure. Isn't that what we're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So in, in that case, the facets could be by repository rather than the, by data type if we map each repository to multiple data types. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, okay, is it, is it useful to maybe just hide the repositories that have no, no results? Charlene, can it be done? Yeah, yes? yeah, yeah. Sure. Like those that are showing zero results? Yeah. So uh, you will uh, share this with us, and then we do the, so for annotation of data sets, um, with the data type on that we have in the ontology, is there some, I mean, so what I want to know is, the implementation of those two parts, right, where the data types uh, are annotated at the repository level and the data type, uh, data set level, is that something that would be a module to be built in into the ingestion pipeline? Um. Yeah, so the ingestion pipeline will need to take into account the, the data type uh, for each data set. So, I mean, I, it would be checking if the original repository has that information. So if it is a, maybe it, all the data set could inherit the annotation of the repository, but we need to make sure that that's the case. So, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, yeah, it depends, uh, yeah, Alejandro, as you mentioned, it depends if there's something in the metadata record that to tell us what the what the data type is. Otherwise, it would have to be repository wide, right? So one thing that does that is we I talked before about this idea that, of there being a sort of continuum from data elements through to forms or templates through to data type. So if we've got dimensions, we can perhaps extrapolate from those to what the data type is. For example, if you see, if you look at some of those mouse phenotype data sets, for example, that have a bunch of behavioral observations, one can extrapolate from those to say, yeah, this is a, a data set of behavioral data. But whether that's something that's in your ontology or not, I, I don't know. But some repositories will have something we can extrapolate, others may not. Yeah, right now I think in terms of dimensions, we have very few repositories that actually have the dimension information. We have probably like six or repositories that have dimension information. Four. Four? Yeah. Oh, I thought we had six. Okay, four yeah. repositories only. But maybe potentially that's something we could use to test, I guess. So if this is something that has to be done at the ingestion level, then uh, Jeff, for sure it would be very useful to get it. I think we need it for the repo data repository. Um, but I'm not so sure, is this something that would be manually done or it's, uh, I guess it's going to be inferred from the 
data set metadata, right? Even yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, it depends. I mean, there would need to be something in the metadata that says what type of uh, data type or something in the metadata that relates to the data type that we could use to differentiate. Um, so Alejandra, do you have an example of a repository that has multiple data types and with the metadata that we could sort of walk through as an example? Um, well, not at the moment, but I can look for one. Well, I, yeah, because I'm, I'm wondering if that's something that, you know, we get the, if, if, if we have an example and then Yu Ling and Barack can look at that, um, you know, and then we can outline that sort of, you know, how, you know, how we would. How so we one would. example, Jeff, would be Cancer Genome Atlas um, in, in the Genomic Data Commons. Not only does that have multiple types within, I mean, Cancer Genome Atlas is kind of interesting in that if each data set has multiple data types um, and the set of data types across each of the data sets is, is kind of similar. So, for I mean, what I, what I mean by data types there is, so they've got sequence information, they've got expression data, they've got SNPs, they've got copy number, they've got clinical data and biospecimen data. So without seeing the ontology, I don't know whether those correspond to different data types or what data types they correspond to. That's certainly an example where there's more than one data set in the a data type in the repository. Okay, because we because I mean, we'd have to look at the metadata that we're receiving from them then to see what the uh, you know what what is actually specified in the in the metadata that could could help discern the data type. I think for the TCGA, uh, we are actually ingesting it at a very high level. So we are not probably pulling in information about whether that particular data set has all the different data types that well, you are. The, so the, the page uh, of, out of TCGA that I, ident that I pointed, um, I forget who it was I pointed to it, whoever was doing the ingestion of that data set. Yeah, it, it's a table which has 39 rows in it. And then it, it, at that level of granularity, it indicates the data types. So it will say the data set for neuroblastoma has, I mean, I'm looking at it right now, has sequence data, expression data, SNPs, copy number, clinical, and, and by, um, by specimen. So, but how we're getting that as a feed, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure how we're getting that and whether that's present in the feed. So, Ian, could you uh, share your screen or send me a sure. link so I can open it? Um, yeah, it's probably quickest if I share my screen, though. Um, do I have to go to a different URL to do that? Yeah, I just promoted you uh, to a presenter so you could share the screen. Um. Um, in the meantime, for example, one other thing that we were looking at is the tax for PDB uh, that at the moment is for protein, but they also have DNA information. So in the ontology, we were tagging with, uh, with both. Yeah, so in the, in, the, in the GDC sample data that's on GitHub, there is a data categories section that has DNA methylation, 
biospecimen, copy number variation, clinical. So that's. And that's the list, yeah. In the in the in the raw in the in the in the metadata, so that we can easily sort of pick up. We would just have to then develop the appropriate mapping to the data type ontology. So uh, Anu, this is uh, if you go to BioCaddy Data Pipeline Sample Data GDC. There's yeah, some so I'm trying to. There's some sample documents. I mean, what you're describing is is exactly what the t essentially what's in the table that I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. So I don't see GDC here, or maybe I'm just lying. GitHub. No. It's it's so small. This is it's down GitHub, to the bottom. Right? Oh, it's at the bottom. GitHub does something funky with the uh, ah okay. Is that you have to go past the capital letters. <laughs> okay. So the sample document one? Uh, yeah, it, it, that should be fine. I mean, I think any of them would. Yeah, so it okay. Has data categories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually slightly more detailed than what I'm seeing. But Alejandra, how does this, how does this compare to what's in your ontology? Is it more granular than your ontology? Um, no, I think this could map uh, well, so because what we've done is to separate in four different axes, uh, this being material, uh, quality, process, um, and I think there was a fourth one, but uh, no, it's escaped. It's Which information. Ontology? Information, information right. type of information. So that's um, something that we also used um, somehow to, to tag elements or we anticipated to reuse for the biosharing too. So where is um, where in the is this the file they give us or is this file result from some of our processing? No, that's that's I yeah I don't know who which group got the GDC data, but this is the quote unquote raw data that we're that we're getting. I think we uh, did the GDC at UD Health. So that's one example, but Jeff, I, you know, I'm not sure that it's fully representative of what you were looking for, which was to identify. Yeah, no, that, that, that's, a, that's a good example that we could start with. So, uh, so we can take a look at the GDC uh, uh, data and, uh, yeah. and uh, we can pull out the various elements and then- I mean, I could- mapping. I, Data type it's probably knowledge. not necessary for me to show the screen, the table that I was looking for, but just so that you understand, that table is not a sparsely populated matrix, as is often the case. For, for the TCGA, what you just saw will be true for pretty much all of the data sets. So every data set in TCGA will list the data types that we just saw for that one. So it's not like 
you know, there are going to be other repositories that are going to have a mixture of data types, but any one particular data set might be only one data type. So we probably want an example of that as well, I would suggest. I think links probably uh, has data sets that have only one data type associated with them. I mean, won't, won't some of the general purpose repositories have this? Most of them, I think, which is why we kind of listed them. Anything that's listed as unspecified right now have multiple data sets. And for the most part, I think TCGA is probably one of the unusual cases where for a single data set, you have multiple data types, right? That's not really very common. I think links also defines the data type. So um, maybe we could use that. I'm just looking at what we have uh, for links. And you can see there's a data type column there. Imaging and one is cytological profile. Well, the other one to maybe look at is mouse phenotype database. Can can we look at the f we did we look at the feed we get from that previously? Because that's one of the ones that we've got dimensions for, but they've got this higher level of granularity if you look at mouse phenome database. But I don't know whether that's in what we're importing. Okay, so to me, what the fact that this is a data set, that first one, this is this bit, this, this is a data set about brain morphology, and that's showing up in well, specific in, in the categories. Yeah, but it says data set type is phenotype strain survey. So what that data set is, is yes, across different strains, they studied the brain morphology. So to my mind, it's a controlled experiment where what they're observing is brain morphology in different genetic mouse strains. So what, what do we want to call that from a data type point of view? Because you'll, you'll also find for the same set of strains, they've gone and looked at reproductive behavior. Well, morphology is, it seems to be a type. And there's always going to be a question about how granular you want to get with that, whether you want to sort of get, get drill down to saying it's brain morphology or, or what. But mouse phenome database is, to me, is quite diverse in terms of the data types it contains.
So do we have a couple of, uh, I guess, repositories that we can start off with then. Yeah, I mean, that would be, I guess, I mean, we could take Mouse Phenome Database, too, to see. It's a, it's a more complicated one, so we can see what, what we have. Right. It's more complicated, but they, but it, it seems that the metadata is in some form accessible. You're going to have to map it to this ontology, but um, at least in some form it's identified. I guess then uh, we we can have some kind of a example, or would you, um, Jeff? Would you have once Alejandra and Philippe have put the uh, created the repository? Then maybe we could have another go at looking through the the ontology and. Well, I mean, we can go through. So, so I mean, we're on our side. What we'll need to do is we'll need to export the, for example, you know, from the GDC the category information, right, and get all the, the list of all the unique values, which I think Yuling is almost done with. Uh, she's been working on that while we've been talking, um, uh, and then we'll need to. That's, We'll, uh, we can share that uh, that uh, the mapping. So we'll have one sheet for GDC, and then we can do another sheet for the mouse phenome database. Um, and then uh, we'll need to map those to the the data type ontology. Uh, where the, the latest version of that is in the GitHub, the DATS GitHub repo, or uh, not yet, but I can put it there. So okay. basically, for each of these. Um, branches that is the process information, the quality, and the material. We selected uh, subsets of other ontologies, so we are not creating new terms. But yes, it would be great to have that list of the existing categories because it would help us to see if we are covering what is needed. So that the, the other question about this ontology. Because we're kind of making a rod for our own back here, which is now we've got to go and look at all these sources and, and work out how they map to the ontology. So the other question about the ontology is, is that something we need to be sharing with repositories to say, is this an ontology that makes sense for you? You know, when, when you're making your data set capable of, of exporting that, that you can use this ontology to tell us what kind of data you're collecting? What, or is that too far in the future? Is that something well, my, my view is that eventually, yes, but at the moment we need to test if the ontology would cover what most repositories have. I would say. Uh, in a way, we need to evaluate right. it first. But, it, it, but so my question, Alejandro, would it, does it make sense to involve them in that discussion? Would that make it easier or harder? <laughs> I can see in, uh, why it might make it harder. Um, yeah, maybe at some point we do need to involve them, yes. But anyway, the problem is that each repository will be uh, different. So if we can gather at least from the information they already have that we cover most of the stuff, it's a first good step. And then we can show them something that is already in a good direction, I would say. Uh, 
I don't know what everyone else thinks, but... Uh, I can see that one issue is pushing another resource to these repositories. It's, it's asking them to do more work, and I don't think that will go down very well. So I'd say let's do a first pass of the mapping ourselves, add synonyms, and maybe track the provenance of those um, terms usage by repositories, so at least we can return a, a URI to those repositories that we mapped your vocabulary to our entities, and, uh, and that's it. Um, as a first pass. So um, I, I just I just want to uh, I guess bring it to the to our notice that maybe not all repositories will have this information. So if we are not able to determine from the sample data what the, or from the data set itself, what the data type is, what, what would be our plan to figuring out the data type? Would, would that have to be done manually then? If it is at the repository level, we can do because it's uh, it's not a large amount. If, uh, in the data set level, then that is not a scalable, definitely. Yeah, right, so, right. So. I mean, I'm just looking at a record from because data site will is is more generic, and I'm looking at the data site CCDC example, which is the Cambridge Crystallographic Database. Well. That's yeah. probably a situation where you're getting a single data type from that repository, I think. But, but there's nothing in that feed. I'm looking at, at number two, number eight. Uh, yeah. I don't see anything in here. Uh, you know, it's kind of in, in there in the title, but one doesn't want to be... <laughs> mining the title for the, the information. But in this situation, you could probably say that what you're getting from here is crystal structures from the entire... repository. But if we look at the data site import, that's going to be much more generic. I don't see anything in there. But right now for import, we are actually pulling in additional metadata. We are pulling in data not from data sites, right? Jeff, we are, uh, we have moved to the to import itself. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I believe okay. so. So maybe... So what about what about stuff like Mendeley and PRJ? Raw data. So maybe we can we can do a review of all the repositories that we currently have.
to see which of them we want to infer from the metadata and which probably should be done manually at least for the repository level. Yeah, I mean, at some point we'll have to do a, uh, yeah, a review of, of all the repositories. Um, but I mean, we, again, we can start with a handful to actually try it on a few that we know about, right? Yeah. So this is not something that we are, we think would be completed before version three. is released, right? Okay. Um, so for the schema.org annotations, uh, I think that's been completed, right, Sarah? Okay. The documentation um, with reference to the writing and testing, that's completed uh, and the JMEO papers is all done. Um, and submit it. So, um, just to maybe want to talk briefly, I don't think we have a lot of time. Should we talk briefly about handling of the aggregators? Yeah, I mean, I think if, if I give a brief overview, then people can think over the next week about the issues and then we can discuss next week. Okay. Um, so, I mean, in the discussion yesterday with uh, uh, Anu and I mean, the, the, the issue was we have different types of aggregators, right? So there's data site, which does sort of aggregate repository information, but it's not because they're aggregating that information, but it's because they produce the identifier for that, right? So they are the sort of the registration point. And with data site, since they don't do any additional processing or anything like that, they basically just register the data sets. We treat them, we treat all the data from a single repository coming from data site as something that comes from that repository, right? Data site was basically just the registrar. With Omics DI, we are doing something slightly different. We're handling them sort of like how we're handling Array Express with geo records, in the sense that Omics DI is an actual aggregator uh, that's pulling this information. Then we list a data set um, as being, uh, you know, as being listed by Omics DI, even though it, the Omics DI has no data sets itself. Um, and so the question is, for, you know, certain aggregators like Omics DI, um, which doesn't seem to have, in the, in the data feed we have from them, there doesn't seem to be any additional information um, that we're getting from them yet. Um, should we treat them like data site in the sense of, uh, you know, that, that each repository within Omics DI should be listed as, as that repository rather than Omics DI? Um, or should it be handled more like the Array Express case, right? Um, so that's the basic question. And, you know, I guess, you know, wh whenever we deal with aggregators, we'll have to, you know, deal, you know, with this sort of on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but that's sort of the, the overview comment. I mean, the, to me, one point of using an aggregator is, well, they've done some work for you, right? They've already aggregated 
and, and ingested data uh, from a bunch of sources and they've organized it so the advantage is you know make use of that effort but it's not the aggregator as you want to give credit to the aggregator somehow but it's still the end data set that's of interest to a user rather than the aggregator. And, you know, from, from that, I mean, to me, there are some implications. I mean, one of which is I, I don't see the value in ending up with two hits for what's essentially the same thing. And, you know, where an aggregator doesn't add any other analysis, then there's nothing really new there, right? I mean, we, we've looked at this question of, there's multiple routes to the same Array Express or the same geo data set add value or does it just confuse things for you? We, I mean that, that's that's a separate question from how we handle aggregators but it but it's one that sort of goes hand in hand with when you use aggregators you're going to have to deal with this problem of of deconvoluting the duplicates. So if you're going to uh, link to the primary repository, then I think the metadata that we're going to display for the aggregate or for that particular data set will have to change, right? Because right now, for example, our landing page takes us to the aggregator landing page for that data set and not for the primary repository. Well, if it does that, how many hops away, if I'm a user, how many hops away is it going to be before I get to the data? Yeah. still not bad. Yeah, this it's one additional step though. One additional click I guess. But if we treat it, uh, the repository separately then we may we don't need to in, uh, ingest the array express and the yeah because we already have array express. Yeah but that's only if you have an overlap. What about all the repositories that we don't have an overlap? Right, we don't have overlap, we need to ingest them, like they just said. So we'll have to somehow um, decide which sub repository we, we want to ingest. Right. Ingest or display? Ingest. Because right now it's all ingested as one single. Yeah, but if Index, we want, right? want to do it like data sets, we may want to separate it to different index. Yeah. So Jeff, can we do it that way then? I mean, we can. I mean, we could. We could ingest them each as a separate repository from Omics DI, yeah. Because then it, then we don't necessarily have to re repeat what we have, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If the repository we already have, then we don't include it. Okay.
So since we have about seven minutes left, um, Alejandra and Philippe, do you want to talk uh, talk about also talk about the DAT transformation in Elasticsearch, where where we we talked about this briefly when we met in DC. Yes, so basically what we thought it would be useful is if from data match people could see that representation of each data set. And while we know that internally this uh, structure is flattened, we were wondering if it would be possible to have an export of uh, a that JSON from data match for each repository. So we have the web API that should be able to fetch that JSON file for each repository. But is it flattened or does it have the hierarchy? It has a hierarchy. It's a JSON, uh, JSON format. They have the field name and field value. No, but it, but is it in the is it reworked into the DATS JSON style? Okay. Which I don't think it is right now, but it could be. No. So at the moment, the one you expose is the one behind Elasticsearch that is a flattened out, right? Yeah, because I, uh, so I believe it's a, it's a straight dump right now, right? I think the format is the same as uh, when you input from the pipeline, the injection pipeline. Well, it's what comes out at the end, which is the index uh, representation. Right. Yes. Yeah. So there need to be a, a modification to the export to uh, uh, to reformat some of that. So is that uh, easier if it's done at at the web API level, or if if it's done, I do not know, when we are exporting from Elasticsearch? Because the Elasticsearch export is also an API, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I mean, the, yeah, but the API sits on top of that, right? Right. Right. On top of the Elasticsearch API. But the easiest, I don't know if it gives us what we, it certainly doesn't give the functionality of the the end data med, um, you know, the data med functionality, but for what we're talking about here, just exposing the endpoint is sufficient to expose, expose JSON. It's a question of whether the right, but when things go into an in, in, into an index, they get flattened a bit, and so the the, the question is with the BioCaddy specific API uh, to add in the uh, but it the still refinement gives you the raw document port valid Elasticsearch, that, right? But Elasticsearch still gives you the raw document that you put in, right? But uh, there are some things that are done in the document, for example, you know, names and other things that have to be flattened in a way so that the, the index works correctly. Okay. So what we're saying, yeah, we don't have the, the, the actual bats in Elasticsearch. Right. And so the, yeah, so the BioCAD API could have a, have a, a, a a little a uh, little little piece of code that then you know uh, formats it as that's on the way out. But don't we have it at some point in the workflow? It seems if we have it, um, 
it seems odd that we've got to reconstitute it at some point. Well, because all, there are only two sources that we have right now that actually provide, or I mean, we have so we the, the we don't turn it into data site and uh, and ICPSR are the only two that have DATs that we get. And we're not turning it into DATs as part of the ingestion. Well, no, we have the the the, the flattening part that happens to, to, to turn it into the index. Yeah. Right, there's sort of what the index needs, and so we take the DATs and, and, and do a little something to that, and then it ends up in the index. And then the question is, for those two, we could just return, you know, you know we could also push forward the DATs representation that we get, the raw representation, and that could just be returned. But the issue is for most of the other repositories, we don't have uh, sort of the, uh, we didn't do two transformations, right, at that. So yeah, so my understanding is that the information anyway is the same as, we, as that but it's formatted in a different way. So the question is if, if it could be possible for most of the repositories that uh, where the JSON is not in the hierarchical way of that, if it could, we could get an export in that form. Okay, so the, uh, take a look at this. So can you send me so what kind of format you want, and then I can see if I can uh, develop a layer on top of the electric uh, API, and then export that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who I need to send it to? Sorry, I'm. Xiaoling. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I think uh, that's it. Um, maybe we will talk uh, about the first supplement. We had a brief discussion about uh, requirements from them. I think uh, Jeff uh, has talked to uh, Talk to them as well as I uh, had a long. We had a long uh, discussion with them. Some probably that was last week. So um, it seems to be that whatever we are going to get from them has got to be implemented primarily at the back end. Um, and so we talked about doing that uh, whenever after we get it from them. It's not going to happen for version three release. So. Was there anything else that we wanted to talk about today? If not, uh, thank you all for calling in. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Bye. Bye.